Good morning, children. This is Ms. Rosado. And today we're going to say goodbye to our wonderful library class with the spiffiest giant in town. It's a book that, yes, it appeals to young children, but it also appeals to the older children because it does carry a very powerful message that I hope all of you will think about, reflect, and be able to show in your lives. The Spiffiest Giant in Town by Julia Donaldson. Pictures by Axel Scheffler. I hope you enjoy this. The Spiffiest Giant in Town. George was a giant, the scruffiest giant in town. He always wore the same pair of old brown sandals and the same old patched-up gown. I wish I wasn't the scruffiest giant in town, he said sadly. But one day, George noticed a new shop. It was full of spiffy clothes, so he bought a spiffy shirt, a spiffy pair of pants, a spiffy belt, a spiffy striped tie, some spiffy socks with diamonds on the sides, and a pair of spiffy shiny shoes. Now I'm the spiffiest giant in town, he said proudly. George left his old clothes behind in the shop. He was about to go home when he heard a sound. On the sidewalk stood a giraffe who was sniffing sadly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my neck, said a giraffe. It's so very long and so very cold. Ah, oh, I wish I had a long, warm scarf. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his striped tie. Eh, it didn't match my socks anyway, he said as he wound it around and around the giraffe's neck. It made a wonderful scarf. Thank you, said the giraffe. As George strode home, he sang to himself, My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe, but look me up and down, I'm the spiffiest giant in town. George came to a river. On a boat stood a goat, who was bleeding loudly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sail, bah, said the goat. It blew away in a storm. I wish I had a strong new sail for my boat. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his white shirt. It kept coming untucked anyway, he said, as he tied it to the mast of the goat's boat. It made a magnificent sail. Thank you, said the goat. George strode on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a gold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. But look me up and down, I'm the spiffiest giant in town. George came to a tiny, ruined house. Beside the house stood a white mouse with lots of baby mice. They were all squeaking. What's the matter? asked George. It's our house, squeaked the mother mouse. It burned down and now we have nowhere to live. I wish we had a new, nice new house. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his shiny shoes. It was giving me blisters anyway, he said, as the mouse and her babies scrambled inside. The shoe made a perfect home for them. Thank you, they squeaked. George had to hop along the road now, but he didn't mind. As he hopped, he sang to himself, My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe, my shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat, my shoe is a house for a little white mouse, look me up and down, I'm the spiffiest giant in town. George came to a campsite. Beside the tent stood a fox who was crying. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sleeping bag, said the fox. I dropped it in a puddle. I wish I had a warm, dry sleeping bag.
bag. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his socks with diamonds on the sides. <laughs> it was tickling my toes anyway, he said, as the fox snuggled into it. It made a very fine sleeping bag. Thank you, said the fox. George topped on, singing to himself. A tie is a scar for a jewel cold giraffe. My shirt's on the boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. But look me up and down. I'm the spiffiest child in town. George came to a big squishy bog. Beside the bog stood a dog who was howling. What's the matter? asked George. It's this bog, said the dog. I need to get across, but I keep getting stuck in the mud. I wish there was a safe, dry path. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his spiffy new belt. It was squeezing my tummy anyway, he said as he laid it down over the bog. It made an excellent path. Thank you, ruff, ruff, said the dog. The wind started to blow, but George didn't mind. He hopped on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on the boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. My belt helped a dog who was crossing a bog. But my pants are falling down. I'm the coldest giant in town. Suddenly, George felt sad and shivery and not at all spiffy. He stood on one foot and thought, I'll have to go back to the shop and buy more clothes. He decided. He turned around and hopped all the way back to the shop. But when he got there, it was closed. Oh, no, cried George. He sank down onto the sidewalk and a tear ran down his nose. He felt as sad as all the animals he had met on his way home. Then... Out of the corner of his eye, he saw a bag with something familiar poking out of the top. George took a closer look. My gown, he yelled, my dear old gown and sandals. George put them on. They felt wonderfully comfortable. I'm the coziest giant in town, he cried, and he danced back home along the road. Outside his front door, stood all the animals he had helped. They were carrying an enormous present. Come on, George, they said. Open it. George untied the ribbon. Inside was a beautiful gold paper crown and a card. Look inside the card, George, said the animals. George put the crown on his head and opened the card. Dear students, Ms. Rosado wants you to remember this card. In all the years that are about to commence. Read it. Inside it said, you gave your scarf to a cold giraffe. Your shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. Your shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of your socks is a bed for a fox. Your belt helped a dog who was crossing a bog. So here is a very fine crown to go with the sandals and gown of the kindest giant in town. Remember, sweet students, that what really matters in life is a big heart and kindness. I hope you enjoyed the story, and I hope that this will not be the last story that Ms. Rosado reads out loud to you. Remember, any time you have to make up your mind as to how you're going to act, remember the spiffiest giant in town. See you soon, hopefully.